Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs with Got That Funk. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're doing okay throughout this uh, pandemic situation that we're living through. Very strange times for sure. Um, I'm all right. Thank you very much. Uh, more or less, I, I do get quite fraught with the frustration sometimes watching the way things are unfolding in the world at the moment, and in particular back in my America. Um, <clears throat> I've been watching with increasing un unease the uh, anti-lockdown protests that are unfolding in various states across the USA. And I'm going to be doing a uh, multi-host broadcast later tonight on The Breakfast Club. And no doubt we will revisit this topic in that discussion, but I wanted to get my own thoughts down uh, unimpeded by interruption and, and discussion and just get them down. So I want to say a few things about how I look at the situation in terms of uh, protests in general, first of all, uh, and, and second of all, bringing arms to a protest, no matter what, where the protest is. And thirdly, I want to talk about bringing arms to a, a government building. So first of all, you know, I, I am a protester myself. I've been an activist for the past 20 years. Um, and I think people's right to protest in a democracy is sacrosanct. Having said that, I do believe that there is <clears throat> such a thing as public health orders that should be respected. Uh, we are in the middle of a plague, and, and I think people have become desensitized to that, just like we've been become desensitized to everything, because unfortunately, and it's not just thanks to Donald Trump. I mean, it's way before Donald Trump that this has been true. I mean, our, our, our outrage tank has been over, over full for so long. Um, uh, you know, our, our outrage meter is just plain busted. You know, it's all over the place. Uh, you, it, it goes off, but it doesn't seem to make an impact anymore. You, you know, it's, we're all saturated with an avalanche of bullshit and have been for years. And it will wear down at the... Uh, <clears throat> the tolerance of any human being, I think. Anyway, so with that in mind, um, <clears throat> yeah, I do think that protesting is um, a sacrosanct, as I say, but there's a right way and a wrong way to protest. I mean, I don't, what I, I find mind boggling is how so many Americans seem to want to believe that the coronavirus is not really happening, that it's some kind of hoax or whatever. And I blame Donald Trump for that, for starting that in the first place. But I mean, you know, in the Internet age, quite frankly, everything that happens has some people saying there's a conspiracy behind it. It almost doesn't matter what happens. There's always going to be some people going, aha, there's something nefarious behind this, you know. <clears throat> so anyway, um, but there are right and wrong ways to protest. I mean, if you have to protest during a pandemic, if you have to protest a stay-at-home order for whatever reason, and I'm going to get into that in a second as well. Um, but if you have to protest, do it like they did it in Israel a week and a half ago or so. Um, they had like 3,000 or more people protesting, and everybody was standing six feet apart. And because everyone was socially distanced properly, it actually made the protest look enormous, and it was only like 3,000 people. But it went on and on and on because everybody was paying attention to the need to respect public health order and protesting responsibly. Um, so yeah, if they can do it right in Israel, they can certainly do it right in America. Uh, the fact is though, that so many of these Americans protesting don't believe that they are in any hazard. And, uh, you know, I don't want anybody to get ill at all, no matter how irresponsibly they behave. Having said that, it's not up to me. It's just, it's, it's a statistical fact based on how fast COVID-19 spreads that some of those people are going to get ill. Um, so anyway, uh, the right to protest, sure, I'm down. I, I don't have a problem with protesting per se. I have a problem with protesting because you can't work um, and survive throughout this pandemic. I have a problem protesting because you can't get your hair cut or buy lawn fertilizer or some of the other bullshit quotes I've seen people say on, on little news clips. Um, I understand the frustration of being locked down. I understand the, the uncomfortableness with volunteering yourself for house arrest. Full stop. I totally get it, man. But, like I say, A, there's a public need for it, and B, 
like I said, it's not like they're telling you to stay home because they don't want you to be free. They're telling you to stay home because they don't want you to kill other people by spreading a disease. It's not the same thing, and you shouldn't be conflating one with the other. You should be mature enough and adult enough to understand that there's a difference between having the right to risk your own life and having the right to potentially kill other people even if you don't get sick yourself. Or if you do get sick, that you don't get so sick that you die, but you might in, in unintentionally pass the virus on to someone else. I mean, the problem with COVID-19 is it is very infectious. And because it's very infectious, we have to take the lockdown seriously. Um, I'm, I keep on getting away from my, my, my other point, but um, <clears throat> yeah, so protesting fine. Protest responsibly if you have to protest. Wear a goddamn mask if you have to go out and protest, yeah? The mask won't keep you from catching it off of someone else if they're, if they're not wearing a mask, but it will help if you do have it. It'll help you from spreading it to other people. And isn't that the least you owe people? Why is it okay to just, just like risk other people's lives because you don't want to be inconvenienced? The, the, the height of the entitlement that, that represents is ghastly to someone like me uh, anyway <clears throat> now as regards protesting with weapons with firearms either either uh, holstered or slung or whatever I'm completely against that there's too much potential at a demonstration for a riot to break out <clears throat> full stop at any demonstration doesn't matter what this topic of the demonstration is uh, anytime you get tens of thousands of people or more uh, in an enclosed space, um, there's potential for things to go wrong. It's that simple. It doesn't even matter if it's a protest. You, I, you know, you stuff 5,000 people in a nightclub, I guarantee you there's going to be at least one fight. You know? Uh, so we have to be careful in situations. You know, as an activist myself, I've been in plenty of demonstrations. Obviously here in Britain, people aren't armed. Um, and I have been in several situations where thankfully there, there wasn't a riot, but there were people definitely trying to instigate a riot. Uh, and in my opinion, thanks to the Metropolitan Police and their professionalism in those two circumstances, there wasn't a riot, but there damn well could have been because there were people trying to start a riot. That's without guns. It scares me to think what would happen if there was a riot and a significant portion of the people were armed. It's not okay to use firearms because you have a political objective. The United States of America is a democratic republic. And in a democracy, if you want to change policy, you do so peacefully by demonstrating peacefully and at the ballot box. A peaceful demonstration doesn't need a force of arms. If you have arms in a demonstration, you are signaling your preparedness not to be peaceful. So you can't even make the argument, in my opinion, and I know people will disagree with this, but in my opinion, you can't make the argument that you're a peaceful demonstrator if you've got a gun slung around your neck. I don't think you can make that argument. The fact that you don't discharge your weapon is not the point. The purpose of being armed in public is to intimidate people who are there to make them afraid that you are capable of inflicting lethal force if you think it's necessary, if you think it's necessary. You're declaring that you have other people's lives in your hands at your discretion when you're armed in public. Um, now, I don't have, uh, you know, Michael was saying in his video earlier that, uh, you know, he doesn't understand why, uh, you know, people want to be armed, uh, you know, and go to government buildings and so on. And I think outright that it should be straight out illegal to bring a, a firearm inside a government building unless you're a, a, a police officer or another agent of the government themselves. Um, I know I feel so strongly about that. I can't overstate it. And that goes for courthouses. That goes for uh, any municipal buildings, really schools, you know, uh, hell libraries. You shouldn't be able to go into, you know, what do you need a gun for in a fucking library? Or, 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 or the county hall, you know, or to school. Basically, you don't. And they should be completely illegal to be on any of those types of premises. Um, and 
to bring firearms to the state capitol and try to force your way in to see officials in the capitol um, is nothing less than an armed insurgency. It doesn't matter whether you brandish your weapons in a threatening way or not. It doesn't matter. Possessing them in the first place is sufficiently intimidating. It is a form of terrorism. Terrorism is force or violence to achieve a political aim or social objective. That's what terrorism is. Now, you might say, oh, you know, you're not forcing anybody if you're not holding them at gunpoint. No, no, no. If, you, if you've got your weapons there, you're showing your intent or you're, 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 you are prepared to take those steps. And I want to ask people, if you honestly want to sit there and say to me from the comfort of your home that you think it's okay for gangs of men to show up at government buildings with firearms... What's to stop, like, you know, ne the next time a crime boss goes to goes up for federal charges, you know, what's to stop, like, 20 of his men just coming in with machine guns and, and, and rescuing him from court? It's the same difference, you know. It's like, we're not going to let this happen. We're just going to show up with guns because apparently the cops aren't going to do anything if we show up with guns. Apparently it's okay to show up with guns. Um, I, see, that's the thing. It's not okay to show up with guns. Now, Michael didn't seem to understand why these people think it's okay to sort of resist the government with guns in the government buildings. And in my opinion, this is not okay to resist the government with your guns uh, in government buildings. The thing is, I understand uh, many people in the United States who own guns will tell you that part of the reason they think they have the right to have that firearm in the first place is as a protection against the government overstepping its bounds. That's where a lot of these people are coming from, and you need to understand that in the context of their behavior, okay? Now, up to a point, I actually agree with their point of view. What do you mean, Paul? What are you talking about? Let me tell you, here's my point. If someone has the gun because they think they're protecting their family, their home, and their property from the government trying to seize any one of those things without due process, that I can fully understand wanting that gun to defend yourself from the government in that situation. The minute you take your gun off your property and into the public, you have become an offensive rather than defensive person. Your gun is now, and uh, you can say I have it for self-defense. That's not why these guys have it at the demonstration. They're not there to defend themselves. Now, I can hear these people in my head talking, and you know, I'm sure people in the audience will disagree with me, but I, I'm sort of guessing, based on my experience being around gun people my, my first half of my life, was that they're probably thinking, you know, they don't have the guns because they intend to use them as such. They just want to have them in case someone tries to tell them that they don't have the right to be there. They want, they, they, their argument almost certainly will be something along the lines of, we have a right to be here, and in order to ensure that they can't send us home forcibly or arrest us, we're going to have our guns, and that way they will be afraid to do so. You're basically justifying using your guns for intimidation for political purposes. I know that's not your intention, but that's what you're doing. You're basically saying that might makes right. Fuck the law. That's what you're saying. It might not be as your intention, but that's what you're saying. All right. Uh, furthermore, I would like to ask people who think it is okay to uh, show up in gangs uh, armed to the teeth in government buildings, if you honestly think that that's okay, in what sense do we have a democracy? A democracy uh, depends on peaceful, democratic means to achieve political objectives. The minute you start using weapons even if it's just for the purpose of intimidation in the name of supposed self-defense, it's still intimidating whether you mean it to be or not. It is. Yeah. So that's a form of terrorism. Force or, the th or, or, or violence. And you say, oh, it's not force because you're not pointing your weapon. No, no, if you have your weapon there, it's all, here's the thing. If you say, Paul, tie your shoe, and I go, fuck you, I don't want to tie my shoe. And then you put a gun to my head and say, Paul, tie your shoe, I'm going to tie my shoe. You didn't have to force my hands with your hands to get me to tie the shoe. That, you don't need to force me in that sense of force. The gun to my head was sufficient to force me.
In fact, knowing you had a gun at all might be a reason I wouldn't argue with you and I would just tie my shoe. Right? And you know that. That's why you've got the fucking gun. So don't play stupid. Don't play innocent. Don't play like you don't have that gun for anything less than a nefarious purpose. You're just biding your time. You're just waiting until someone above you tells you to fucking jump. And don't think people like me don't fucking see this shit. Because I see it. I see it. These people standing around in photographs like the one in the thumbnail for this video. What circumstances would it be okay for them to discharge their firearms? Short of being shot at themselves. Is there any circumstance? which they should take their guns off their shoulders and assume a posture of potential attack. Any circumstance that would justify that whatsoever, short of having guns pulled on them themselves. Even if the police pulled guns on them, which they do to loads of other people all the time, uh, would, the, uh, would the civilians who are on government property to storm the government building and make some kind of political protest with their weapons in violation of who knows how many laws, would they be okay to discharge their weapons at the cops? Are you honestly going to make that case to me? I should fucking hope not. Since there's no legitimate purpose of using your gun in a state building, you shouldn't have it there. It's that simple. And so, yeah, if you are breaking local laws, like in Michael's case, he lives in, in Colorado, where Denver has specific laws about guns in public, and some of these people were breaking the laws in Denver, and I agree, throw the book at these people. And if that means they lose the right to have their guns, so fucking be it. They should have followed the fucking laws. There's not very many gun laws in America in the first place, so the ones there are should be pretty fucking easy to follow. I don't know. I, 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 I find it impossible to comprehend how people can honestly say or pretend that they think you can be a peaceful protester packing. That's not peaceful. It doesn't matter whether you discharge your firearm or not. You're not peaceful if you're armed. That's not peaceful. Right. Um, so obviously I'm against these uh, protesters being armed. I'm against the fact that they're not uh, taking care to try their best not to infect other people. Uh, I think they're, you know, not socially distancing, everything else like that. They're only going to make the situation persist longer than it has to, which is another reason why these, these protests are just completely backward. Now, my main issue with the protests is they're protesting the wrong thing. Because I understand your frustration about, you know, your civil liberties being sort of basically, it's an affront to your civil liberties to be told to stay home, to put yourself under voluntary health arrest. I get it, man. And I also get the fact that you're broke or approaching broke and you want to have your normal life back and, and you need to make money. I totally get it. But the fucking government has screwed y'all and they're trying to force you back to work because they've screwed you. You shouldn't be protesting the lockdown order. You should be protesting the fact that there's a fucking plague going on and they're making you go out and work in it rather than giving you the means by which to lock down and maintain your own safety and the safety of the wider community. The government is the one to blame for this situation, not your local government, the federal government, dare I say it, Trump and his people. It's not limited to Trump, of course. Congress has been completely fucking failing. They dropped the ball completely. They've had four stimulus packages and they've barely done anything for regular people. It's a disgrace. It's disgusting. And everyone involved from Nancy Pelosi to Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, and, and everybody who has failed to get these fucking resolutions passed that will help regular people on the ground it's a disgrace and there's no excuse for the next if there is another stimulus bill there's no excuse for any of it going up any money left should all be going down to people i'm absolutely furious to see what's been going on in america of course people are pissed off with the stay at home orders 
Of course they are, because they can see that the life they once lived is probably lost to them, and they don't know what's going to happen, and they just want to see if they can get back to some sense of normal. I get it, man. I totally get it. But while there's a plague going on, we're only hurting ourselves if we don't follow strict social distancing and lockdown procedures as long as they need to last. And until we can get testing going properly and get people who are tested clear out into the population first, back to work and everything like that, get people tested and back out and back out until we have an idea that more people are out without the virus than, than have it, we need to stay locked down. I know it's a pain in the ass, man. I don't fucking like being locked down. And I cherish my freedom. My individual liberty matters to me, and I don't like the fact that uh, governments all around the world, it's not just the United States, it's also here in the UK and all across Europe and Asia, uh, certain governments are using the pandemic um, to advance authoritarian goals, and that is never okay. But if you have to protest, do it responsibly. Wear a mask, maintain social distancing in the protest, and try to do it in a spirit of community rather than in a spirit of defiance. We're all on the same side here. We all want to get our normal lives back. We all want to get a world that we can enjoy and, and, and you know, have a quality of life. Uh, but we're not going to do that if we keep prolonging the spread of the virus by going out and, and being too close to each other when we know this thing is still still killing like thousands of people every day in America and hundreds of people every day here in the UK. It's like 700 people a day here in the UK. And this is just a tiny country. It's smaller than California in terms of size and about one and a half times the population. So yeah, um, it's uh, the, the virus is only going to go away when we have some form of treatment or vaccine for it. And in the meantime, we have to minimize its spread so that its effects aren't too deleterious for people and for the economy, which everybody seems to be so goddamn concerned about. Um, the fact that the virus is disproportionately uh, affecting certain communities, uh, people of color in particular uh, in America and in the UK are suffering disproportionate to the uh, percentage that they are of the population. And, you know, there's an, uh, any number of social factors that play into that. And we need to, when we start coming out of this pandemic, we need to start addressing those social factors um, and all the other inequities in our society that this pandemic has brought to light. Um, the abysmal pay that people who sustain us, uh, that we now call essential workers, who 12 months ago were considered sort of lowest of the low. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I hope we have those conversations, but that's not for now. For now, we need to have the, this conversation, the conversation, which is, Hey, stay the fuck at home. If you, if you have the virus, but you don't have symptoms, you could be saving lots of lives by staying home. And you, you know, it's okay to think about yourself. It's okay to want good things for yourself, but it's not okay to risk other people's lives just to make yourself happy. Anyway, that's my two cents. I want to thank you for putting up with this 24 minute long video and I will see you again next time. Until then, peace. May all your ups and downs be ups.